Hello, this is Sharon with Flat World Knowledge, and I'd like to thank you all for joining us today as we do a brief podcast interview with John Gallagher, author of Information Systems, A Manager's Guide to Harnessing Technology. Hi, John. Hi, Sharon. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for joining us today. Let's jump right in. And um, if you wouldn't mind, our first question is so you could let our listeners know a little bit about why you decided to write a book for the information systems course. Sure. And, and, and in fact, um, you know, the book was in progress before Flat World Knowledge actually approached me. What I was doing was I was writing content and making it available online. I had been teaching for, I guess at the time, about a dozen years and only used a conventional textbook my first semester. And, um, you know, I also supplemented the text with readings from the trade press or, um, you know, from Wall Street Journal, those kinds of things. And the students uniformly said, get rid of the textbook and keep the trade press reading. And, you know, I found that it was a lot easier to wrap durable management concepts around a contemporary example that students love instead of trying to give students, you know, a dry chapter and then, and then building the excitement out of that dry chapter. The problem I was having was, you know, I'd, I hand them a, 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 a set of readings that maybe spanned three, four, or five years, and, you know, some of the things sort of got long in the tooth. So I started writing my own uh, chapters that, that tried to, um, you know, have the kind of pop that you would get in a Business Week cover story or a Fortune article, um, but still, uh, you know, had those durable management concepts behind the scenes. And Flat World came in, uh, in, along and approached me, and, uh, and, well, now we've got a book. Oh, that's great, and you know how happy we are about that. Um, and I guess you've, you've kind of touched on this a little bit, but definitively, um, including, I'm sure, the currency aspect, but what do you think and, and what do we know makes your book special um, or, or really just different than some of the other information system books out there on the market today? Sure. Well, the content for, for the book um, comes out of uh, our reworking of the information systems core at Boston College. Um, I, I actually switched over to, to teach in the IS Corps about five years ago, and we had um, a problem I think that many schools had. Our information systems graduates were, um, well, our, our enrollments had plummeted, and we had a lot of success at the MBA level, um, but, uh, you know, we needed to do something with, with the undergrads, and in fact, you know, there were a lot of myths that were out there that, um, you know, there were no jobs after the dot-com bubble, that jobs were going away to India, and in fact, you know, we had recruiters continuing to bang down our doors but students were just enrolling. And I always found this so unusual because, in a way, our, our students had never been geekier. And, and at BC, the, the term geek is a, it's a badge of honor. Um, but, you know, I mean, they text each other with arcane language on, on, a, on a cell phone, and they spend so much time in front of a screen. And, um, you know, this is the kind of stuff that, that students should really be getting excited about. It's fast-paced. It's uh, deeply ingrained in, in, in practice. And, you know, when you look at the kinds of things that have, that have changed over the past 10 years, Google hadn't existed or barely existed 10 years ago, and now it's the, the largest, most profitable media company on the planet. There was no iTunes. iTunes is now the number one music retailer. There was no iPhones. Pizza Hut is, is selling pizza through iPhones applications, and Starbucks has two iPhones apps. There was no Facebook. They're now you know, co-sponsoring presidential debates. There was no social media. And um, you know, in, in the November 2009 Harvard Business Review, some colleagues and I, uh, wrote a, an article that really was a blueprint for firms to try to deal with the fact that this community conversation genie is, is out of the bottle. And firms are struggling to try to figure out, you know, wow, how do we deal with this whole new landscape? So there are so many new things that students really need to learn. It's not just fun stuff, but it's driving the discipline. And, you know, it, it's shocking across the board that, that students aren't, aren't drawn to technology regardless of, of their primary focus. I mean, and for the finance students, if they're going to be investment bankers, technology is going to, going to um, you know, be fueling the IPO pipeline. In accounting, you know, it's never been more important to know where those numbers are coming from with Sarbanes-Oxley. In, in marketing, it's all about tech. It's about you know, not a, a bunch of guys sitting in a, in a room thinking up a Super Bowl ad. It's about you know, how do firms use technology to, to reach customers with the right product, through the right channel, at the right price, at the right time. It's all about technology. I mean, operations business law, all of these things are, are, are more ingrained with technology than ever before. So we decided, let's reinvent the information systems core course. And, you know, we start with strategic thinking right away, which we usually left that for the capstone. But what we realized was the technology was going to change. And, um, you know, we want to make sure that students understand the big picture stuff right from the start. 
And this was great because students were able to understand, you know, what kind of role does technology play in building brands, building scale economies, and creating these kinds of data assets that can make businesses, um, you know, give them defensible comp competitive advantage. And then we created a series of really great cases, you know, studying Zara, Netflix, Google, Facebook. And there are durable technology and management concepts in operations and in marketing and in ethics and in globalization in all of those different cases that we have. And, you know, there are a bunch of chapters on, on things that are really fairly new, I, I, I think, to information systems textbooks. So, you know, we, we just wrote this article for HBS and, and, um, or HBR. And, um, you know, so we've got a chapter on social networking, uh, a chapter on network effects. Business Week, a uh, couple few weeks back, had an article on the, um, a cover story on the app economy, you know, what's happening with, with the um, iTunes app store and Facebook. And so our network effects chapter covers that. Our Moore's Law chapter covers, you know, not this dull as dirt management um, or um, dull as dirt technology concepts around, uh, you know, transistors in Moore's Law, but really what does this fast, cheap technology mean for the manager? So there's a chapter on the data asset, a chapter on, on um, software and flux, which is cloud computing and software as a service and virtualization. All this, this new stuff that I think students can get really excited about and that they all should have in their managerial toolkit when they leave uh, uh, through a core course. Now that's fantastic and I know that the IS professors out there probably couldn't agree with you more. We all kind of went through that, that up and down um, kind of enrollment change there over the last five years and seeing a book kind of make its way or a course make its way through that and a book emerge from that uh, could only add to the to to the interest level in terms of, of this book for other courses out there who are looking to enrich this program. Um, you know, we've been really fortunate, fortunate in this too, Sharon. I mean, our enrollments are up fourfold in four years since we've done this. And, <laughs> That's um, amazing. That's amazing. You know, we're not trying to strong arm our students to study technology. We want them to study what they're interested in, but everybody that, that goes through this course really gets it. Now, if they want to be a marketer, they realize they need tech. If they want to be in finance, they realize they need tech. And you know that's the approach that we've offered here. And it's such a pleasure to be able to kind of create this content and to share it with the world. So, um, so it's fun. No, and you know, you did. You gave us a couple examples um, of how your book utilizes just the most current um, technology and ideas out there, and 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 brings them forward in a really interesting way. Um, do you have any other examples of the book that kind of demonstrates, um, or I should say, do you have other examples in the book that, that you're the most proud of? <laughs> I'm really proud of the whole book, <laughs> if I can say that modestly. Um, you know, I, I hope folks, the, the listeners, check it out and, and enjoy it. It's one of the things that's nice about having this online project is that folks stumble across the content or, or they hear about it from, from your marketing efforts and, um, you know, they reach out to me as, as an author and, and it's, it's great to just, you know, see, to, to see these rave reviews regularly come in via email. So that's, you know, empowering. But um, let me see, you know, uh, I, I guess something like the Moore's Law chapter, and, and we talked a little bit about that just a second ago, but, but every text has this kind of conventional chapter on Moore's Law that talks about how a microprocessor works. But for the manager, that's really about fast, cheap technology. And, and what it means for the manager is that the impossible potentially will become possible. It will disrupt industries. It will create opportunities. So there's an opportunity to layer in management frameworks as well as technology concepts. I mean, Moore's Law is behind you know, the iPod and the Kindle and you know things that are related to Moore's Law but not specifically about Moore's Law and making storage cheaper or making bandwidth and telecommunications faster and cheaper. All that stuff is, is, is important and that's the kind of thing that, that managers really need to be aware of. But in that chapter, we really go a step further. And, you know, there's an opportunity to talk about the role of technology in empowering the poor. What does the cell phone mean from an economic perspective, to globalization, to world economic development? And then the chapter ends up with a segment on e-waste. And um, the e-waste segment is, is one I'm particularly proud of because, you know, we, we set up in the Zara chapter um, this, this case in the fashion industry. There's a, a portion where we talk about the difficulty in sourcing product from contract manufacturers globally. You know, there have been a lot of ethical issues in the fashion industry, and technology can provide a solution there. Um, well, technology, you also not only have to think about where you're getting products from, you need to think about where you're end-of-lifing products. And there's now this effluent of the affluent, where there are just, you know, tons of, of e-waste items that are being discarded worldwide. And I'm really proud of the fact that this segment was, was offered online in the chapter before. 60 Minutes did a segment on this, and Frontline did a, a whole documentary on, on e-waste issues. 
And these are critically important for the manager. A number of firms have been burned by the fact that they thought that they were ethically disposing of product and they, they weren't. So these are the kinds of things that you can wrap around discussions of how microprocessors work, what it means for the manager, and how managers need to think soup to nuts about the role of these technologies in the organization. No, oh, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. So I'm going to wrap up the uh, our time here together with um, my final question, which is, and, and we both know this, you could have published this book. There's a lot of... Um, there's a lot of higher ed publishers that would have loved to have published your textbook and for information systems, but we are delighted that you decided to publish with Flat World Knowledge. Can you tell us what finally uh, tipped the scales in our direction, if you wouldn't mind? Sure. Well, well what's really fun about the Flat World model is, is this is the stuff that I study. So, so you are, are uh, you know, this textbook case of, of market disruption. And, um, you know, I, I didn't want to write a book for a conventional publisher because it, it just takes so long to get that content out there. It's very expensive. Um, it's tough for them to commit to the kind of upgrade cycle that I think is, is really necessary to allow this content to continue to pop and resonate with our students. So, you know, to be able to update this stuff so regularly is really important to me. And it's also important to be able to reach as many students as possible. So, you know, here we are with Flat World. We have an opportunity to, instead of having another $180 textbook, we're offering a textbook for free, so everybody can do it. The switching costs for faculty to switch from one $180 textbook to another are really high. But with Flat World, you can sample some stuff, and it's been great for, for me to hear feedback from faculty that said, you know, wow, I tried a few chapters or some cases here. The students loved it. We're going to use the whole book next semester. So that, from an author's perspective, it's really empowering. But, um, you know, also the, the fact that, you know, the, the content not only is available for free, but there's a reasonable price for the print version of the product. Um, that means a lot to me because I was a first-generation college student, and um, you know I, I'm the first person in my family to go through uh, to get a university education. And so the fact that we can really disrupt this this $180 textbook model with um, you know something which is accessible to everyone means a lot to me personally. And you know we're we're clearly the good guys. We're wearing the white hats in in, in this battle. So um, that's fun. That's really um, I'm delighted. I believe very strongly in the mission of the firm and. Um, you know, I, I'm not sure if I, I mentioned this earlier, but I have a, the great privilege to be able to lead our field study courses. So we have alumni that are um, in very senior positions, VP level or higher, at Apple and Facebook and Google and Amazon and, and, and you know, uh, one that's a, a, through a, a spouse relationship on the board of Netflix and so many other firms that we cover. So to be able to learn from them, from my several weeks of interaction with these firms in our field study programs, and to be able to take that thinking and boil it down into our course, and into a textbook, which I think encapsulates the kinds of things that managers need to know about today, um, that's great. And, and Flat World gives me an opportunity to do that, to continue to update that content and, and, and offer a good product. So um, I hope the listeners like the product and adopt the textbook, and, and I look forward to hearing from them. Oh, no, that's great, John, and we do too. And, and I can't tell you... Um First of all, how much I appreciate your time today. We know how busy you are, just given all the stuff you've just been talking about there, um, as well as just how 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 much we appreciate uh, the time and the effort that you've not only put into this book, but but my goodness, to the discipline and to your students. And um, I'm 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 just pleased to have you here with us at Flat World Knowledge. And thank you again for your time on the podcast. And thank you all, uh, the listeners, for being with us. And we look forward to hearing from you. Thank you very much. Sure. Thanks for your hard work, and, and uh, look forward to, to more of these, too. Bye now. Bye-bye.